Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for this Just Grants training session on entity management. Happy to have you here with us today. We'll be working today to provide you with all the information you'll need to manage these processes in Just Grants. We are recording today's session, and we will make that recording available to you as soon as we can. My name is Jeff Tynes, and I, along with several other Just Grants training team members, will be working to help you through the processes for entity management. Before we get started, we'd like to review some of the features that you'll find in WebEx that will be important for you today. The meeting includes a chat function to communicate with panelists, but we ask you reserve the use of that chat for when you're experiencing technical difficulties accessing the session and you need assistance. Today, we're going to be making use of WebEx's question and answer feature, which is designed for sessions like this one where we expect you to have questions. Please use it for questions about session content. WebEx is going to group those answers and questions together to make it easy for you to find them in the log. We've disabled video for participants so that we have more system resources available to present the content. We've also muted all attendees to reduce background noise. If you cannot hear, please click the arrow to the right of the unmute button at the bottom of your screen to select another audio option. If you're still not able to make the audio work, please consider calling in by phone using that telephone number that's located on the meeting invitation you receive via email. Should you want or need live captioning, you'll find that there's a multimedia viewer available by selecting the icon with three dots at the bottom right corner of your screen. Open that multimedia viewer to access the captioning. We have activated the Q&A feature today to answer your questions on the subject matter. Several Just Grants team members are monitoring the Q&A, and they will provide answers to you, writing as much as possible. We'll also be stopping to answer questions verbally during the session, and we'll select questions that may require a greater level of detail than that can be provided in the chat, or if there's some questions that have been answered a few times. As we receive and answer questions in the Q&A, you can use the scroll bar to the right to review them. And just to note, we are happy to answer any questions that help you navigate through Just Grants, but occasionally we get questions that are better directed to your grant managers. Questions about the requirements of your specific programs should be directed to your grant managers as they are the best equipped to answer them within the context of your award. So the purpose of today's presentation is to learn more about the process of managing your entity. We will present an overview of entity management, including a discussion about the role and responsibilities of the entity administrator as well as the five remaining Just Grants user roles and introduce the four Equal Employment Opportunity Program or EEOP user roles. We will review how to initially onboard during the application submission, including information about Just Grants and how it uses data with other systems. We will also discuss entity management specifics, such as entity user management and Just Grants and in the Digital Identity and Access Management Directive or Diamond system. We'll also be talking about the entity profile, entity users, roles, awards, and assignments, and provide direction for managing planned and unplanned changes to the entity administrator role. The entity administrator also maintains and manages entity documents. At the end of the session, we will show you where you can go for resources and assistance as you navigate SAM.gov. All right, let's begin our discussions about entity management with an overview of what an entity is and what an entity administrator does. So the term entity refers to applicants and award recipients, and an entity has unique identifiers such as legal name, doing business as name, and one or more numeric or alphanumeric identifiers. Just grants are two distinct types, organizations, and individuals. Most of the entities in Just Grants are considered organizational entities. There are many types of organizational entities, such as nonprofits, American Indian tribes, state or local governments, and institutions of higher education. Organizational entities must register and maintain an active registration in SAM.gov in order to access funding. SAM.gov Unique Entity Identifier, or UEI, is considered the primary alphanumeric identifier for organizational entities and just grants. An individual entity is a person not an organization that's applying for grant funding. And typically, an individual entity applies for a fellowship grant program. 
Now, as you can see here on the screen, individual entities do not need to register in CN.gov. Instead, individual entities should use their IRS federal tax ID employee identification number, also referred to as the EIN, or tax identifier number, known as the TIN. This is their alphanumeric identifier. And for security purposes, please note that individuals should not apply using a social security number as their unique identifier. So the entity administrator is a critical user in Just Grants, and every entity must have one user designated as the entity administrator. I'm going to act as the entity's gatekeeper and bear responsibility for managing entity users' roles and assignments in Just Grants. The entity administrators also ensure the accuracy of the entity profile in Just Grants and coordinate the applicable changes in SAMP.gov. They'll also be the one who maintains entity documents within Just Grants. Now, SAM.gov is the federal government's source of truth for entity identifiers. Organizational entities must maintain an active registration and ensure their, regist their information there remains current. Other federal systems use the entity data from SAM as well. Now, the Digital Identity and Access Management Director, or DIAMOND system, is the DOJ secure user management system. The entity administrator determines who should have access to entity data and invites those individuals to be entity users. Now, the entity administrator is going to keep entity users and their roles up to date and reassigns the entity administrator role as necessary. Finally, Just Grants is the DOJ grant management system. The entity administrator will assign and reassign entity users to specific application and awards here. Entity administrator will also upload entity level documents into the system. So user roles allow specific functions and features in Just Grants. Now, a user can have one or more than one role assigned to them based upon the type of work that they need to do in Just Grants. Entity Administrator. So the Entity Administrator, in addition to managing users and keeping the entity profile information current, confirms the authorized representative's legal authority to enter into contracts, grants, cooperative agreements with the federal government on behalf of your entity. Entity administrators also have read-only access to all applications and awards in Just Grants. This provides them a bird's eye view of everything. The entity administrator needs to take some part in managing the award or an application, then they need to be assigned some additional role that will allow them to do so. Now, your authorized representative. The authorized representative accepts or declines uh, the only role that it may accept or decline an award on behalf of your entity. And this role must be assigned to someone in the organization with the legal authority to enter into contracts, grants, and cooperative agreements with the federal government on behalf of your entity. Now, your entity administrator will confirm the authorized representative's legal authority. Application submitter. This is the role that can enter data into the application, certify it, and submit it on behalf of your entity. You can have up to three application submitters assigned to an award at one time in Just Grants. Your Grant Award Administrator. Your Grant Award Administrator submits programmatic award requirements, including performance reports, grant award modifications, and portions of the closeout. your alternate grant award administrator. This person supports the grant award administrator. They, they have additional programmatic role providing support to the grant award administrator that allows them to edit and submit performance reports as well as grant award modifications, commonly called GAMs. Finally, your financial manager. The financial manager is the one who certifies and submits quarterly federal financial reports on the behalf of your organization. Next, looks like a look at the new Equal Opportunity, Equal Employment Opportunity Program roles. Certain entities that receive DOJ funding are required to submit an Equal Employment Opportunity Plan. Now, the purpose of the EEO plan is to ensure that entities receiving DOJ financial assistance are providing full and equal employment opportunities to prospective employees. 
There are four EEOP roles on the screen, as you can see here, with each having unique duties. Individual users can only be assigned one EEOP role in addition to any Just Grants roles that they have been assigned. Let's take a moment here to troubleshoot some of the common questions we get before we open the floor to any potential questions you might have at this point. We are often asked how to know who in an organization is the assigned entity administrator. Well, if you'd like to find your entity administrator, you can log into Just Grants and then select the Entity User tab in the left navigation. <clears throat> this option will display all users in your Just Grants account, as well as the roles associated with each user, where you can easily find who your entity administrator is. We are also often asked, what should be done if the entity administrator has left the organization and no one has been designated to take that role prior to their leaving? Well, it is best for your organization if the reassignment happens before they leave, but we realize sometimes that's not possible. If the entity administrator has left your organization without reassigning the role, there will be no one able to update your user record or assign work. The best way to fix this is to contact the Just Grant Support Desk for assistance. But before you do that, it's important to update your eBiz point of contact in SAM.gov because that will be the person that the support desk is going to assign as your new entity administrator. In a few minutes, we'll demonstrate how easy it is for an entity administrator to reassign that role before they leave for vacation, medical leave, or permanent leave. Now, this question about SAM comes up often. SAM provides an option for you to enter both the eBiz point of contact as well as an alternate eBiz point of contact. And many entities wonder if they should designate an alternate. A SAM allows entities to identify an alternate eBiz portacy, but we find it can be left blank or sometimes entities list the same person twice. But we really strongly encourage you to take advantage of this deal to ensure that backups are readily available in case there is any changes in your staff. Now that we've talked a bit about some of the common questions that we see, let's open the floor to see if we have any additional questions. Hi, yes. Um, how do I assign roles within specific awards, not for the entire entity? We're going to go through those very processes here in just a few minutes. So uh, why don't we just sit tight and see if we don't answer your question through today's presentation. Okay, we have another question um, regarding EEOP filing. If the EEOP filing is pending, um, Uncertainty on what is missing for the completion in just grants. Uh, perhaps I can answer that one. Um, the uh, in just grants, the only action to take regarding EEOP is that the entity administrator needs to assign each of the EEOP roles to a just grants user. Um, that's the only action to be taken in just grants. Okay, and our last question is, uh, what are my responsibilities and how do we submit for reimbursements from our awarded funding? That's a question I believe it's in regards to ASAP and you'll actually need to review some of the ASAP materials on their website. They'll have answers to questions like that. It's outside the scope of today's presentation. And our last question is, can one person be the EA and the authorized rep? The answer to that is yes. Uh, based upon, there's, there are organizations where one person may take on almost all the roles that are available in Just Grants. It just depends upon how your entity is structured. Okay, that's all of our questions for now. Thank you. All right, so let's take a look at initial onboarding. In this section, we're going to talk a bit about how the new entity creates their Just Grants account through the application submission process. Now, for entities new to Just Grants, the initial entity onboarding process occurs during application submission and requires on the following federal systems for the critical onboarding data. Organizational entities that are seeking federal funding must maintain and register an active status in SAM.gov 
For this reason, SAM is considered the federal government's source of truth for organizational entity identifiers. Now, if an organizational entity is new to just grants, the SAM.gov eBiz point of contact, as we just discussed, is automatically onboarded as your entity administrator for just grants. Now, once onboarded into just grants, the SAM.gov eBiz point of contact can transfer that entity administrator role to another user if that's desired. Now, for entities that are new to just grants, the initial entity onboarding process is triggered when an entity submits their application for DOJ funding and grants.gov. Now, where entities first apply as part of that two step grant application process. Now, once Just Grants receives the grants.gov application, the entity administrator will receive an email with onboarding instructions. If you're an individual entity, initial entity onboarding bypasses SAM.gov and it relies solely upon information provided in your grants.gov application. Again, individuals must use one of those alphanumeric identifiers we mentioned earlier, usually the EIN or TI, and they must use that consistently in Just Grants. Now, as mentioned, the entity administrator in Just Grants is automatically assigned to the, is the individual uh, listed as your eBiz point of contact in your SAM.gov account. Now, it's the SAM.gov eBiz point of contact that is responsible for registering, renewing, or confirming your SAM.gov account each year. And for new SAM.gov accounts, eBiz point of contact is also the person that obtains or confirms that the correct UEI number is in SAM.gov. Entity information such as the UEI, legal name, address, doing business as name, that's all stored in SAM.gov. But during the application process, that information will flow from SAM.gov through grants.gov and will finally populate your entity profile when you get into just grants. The grants.gov is a federal website that provides access to funding opportunities for multiple government agencies. So to apply for funding, you'll need to log into grants.gov using credentials linked to your SAM.gov account. Once logged into grants.gov, you'll search for funding opportunities, select the correct competition ID, and then submit the SF-424 and SF-LLL forms. These are standard government forms. Now, once Just Grants has received the grants.gov application, the entity administrator will receive that email with onboarding instructions. Diamond and Just Grants are the two DOJ systems that enable entities to manage users and their work. Entity administrator will use Diamond to manage entity users and their roles. The entity administrator will then assign users to awards and applications in Just Grants. Now, once entity users complete that Diamond registration process, they can then log into Just Grants and complete any assigned work. So we'll stop here once again. And these are some common questions that we get that are related to the initial entity onboarding. New entities applying for DOJ funding often ask what should be done if the CM got guided for registration or it's newly activated. So Just Grants only receives information from SAM.gov when an entity's registration is active. You need to visit SAM.gov and use their check entity status function to confirm that status. Now, once the SAM.gov status is activated, Just Grants will receive that information from SAM.gov usually within one to five days. It's a very good idea as well to verify the SAM.gov account is active prior to beginning your application process if that's possible. Now, it may happen that the SAM.gov eBiz point of contact does not find their written Just Grants registration email. So the first thing you should do is to check that point of contact spam or junk folder and look for an email from diamond no reply at usdoj.gov. Users may also receive emails from the do-not-reply at ojp.usdoj.gov or at ojp at servicenowservices.com. Another common question we see is what to do if the SAM.gov UBIS point of contact is already associated with another entity in Just Grants under a different UEI. So if that SAM.gov is associated, POC is associated with an existing entity in Just Grants, they're going to need to establish and use a unique email address for each entity in Just Grants, or they'll need to be removed as a user in that existing entity. An individual's user's email address can only be associated with a single UEI in Just Grants. 
Finally, another common question we see is related to the SAM.gov alternate eBiz point of contact. And what if the entity wants to use the SAM.gov alternate eBiz point of contact for onboarding? So SAM.gov does allow entities to identify that alternate eBiz point of contact, as we mentioned. And in the event of a just grants conflict with the primary SAM.gov eBiz point of contact, an entity may elect to use that alternate POC for initial onboarding. Then that alternate eBiz point of contact needs to contact the Just Grants technical support team for the onboarding assistance. Take a moment again to see if we have any outstanding questions we can answer. There are no questions at this time. Thank you. So let's take a moment now to look at the two systems that are responsible for entity user management. Just Grants is where your entity user completes the DOJ grant related activities. Entity administrators assign entity users to specific applications and awards using Just Grants. Once an entity user is assigned to an application or award, they will receive assignments and take actions associated with their assigned role or roles. A successful entity user management depends on sequential actions that are taken both the entity administrator and entity users. Now, the entity administrator invites each entity user and assigns roles to each one of them in the diamond system. Now, each entity user will receive an instructional email from diamond once the entity administrator has invited them to register. An entity user needs to complete the actions that are outlined in that email within 72 hours. And those actions are going to include setting up their password as well as multi-factor authentication and then making sure that they log into Just Grants at initial time. Now, after the entity users have logged into Just Grants at initial time, their accounts will become active. It's at that point that the entity administrator can begin making user assignments in Just Grants. Your entity administrator can assign applications to one or two authorized representatives and up to three application submitters. Entity admins also can assign awards to one or two authorized representatives, one grant award administrator, and one financial manager. Now, after applications and awards are assigned by the entity administrator, then that entity user can log into Just Grants and to begin to take action on their assigned applications and awards. Take a moment here again to go through some troubleshooting. Sometimes we hear the question that invited a new entity user in Diamond, and they're curious why they don't see them listed in the entity user section in Just Grants. Now, again, when the entity administrator invites a user in Diamond, an email is sent to that user from the diamond no reply at usdog.gov. And they must follow the instructions there within 72 hours and log into Just Grants at initial time. So you want to check with the entity user to confirm that they've taken those actions. Now, if the user cannot find that email or if the link contained in the email has expired, then you'll need to go back and re-invite the user in Diamond. Now, once done and the user successfully logs into Just Grants that initial time, then they will be active and their name will appear in the Entity User section of Just Grants. Another question we get is that I added or removed roles from an existing entity user in Diamond, but those changes are not showing up in Just Grants. All you need to do in this case is simply refresh the Just Grants screen. Once you've made those changes, those changes synchronize immediately. So you may just need to refresh your screen. So assigning entity user roles in Diamond is the first step in assigning entity users to awards and applications in Just Grants. So let's take a look at that process now. So Diamond. Again, as the Digital Identity and Access Management Directory system that allows you to manage users and roles in Just Grants. The Entity Administrator is the only person with access to Diamond, so you can see how important it is to have an active Entity Administrator. Now, in addition to ensuring the SAM.gov account is active and current, there are also activities that take place in Diamond. 
Then Diamond, the Just Grants uses to invite users to register, assign, and remove and change roles and to reassign that entity administrator role. We're going to demonstrate some of those processes in just a moment. We'll also show you how to invite and re-invite users into your Just Grants account, as well as how to add and remove roles from users and to remove users from your entity. That's all done in Diamond. And then again, as a reminder, once the entity administrator adds a user and assigns a role, Diamond will send an informational email to that user with instructions on how they can create their own user account and log into Just Grants. So let's now take a look at Diamond and the actions that are available to the entity administrator when they first log into the system. So when the entity administrator logs into Diamond, the screen displays options on several buttons. Selecting these buttons allows the entity administrator to perform needed actions in Diamond. You'll use this View Entity button to view information such as the current entity administrator and entity, administ uh, and entity users and their respective roles. You'll use the Manage Entity button to replace the current entity administrator with another active entity user or if you need to remove users. The View User button provides the opportunity to view information about entity users, including their role or roles, and the last invitation date. The Invite Entity User button allows the entity administrator to invite new entity users. Now, if the user does not have an existing Diamond account, a new account will be created, and the user will receive an instructional email. This re-invite entity user button allows the entity admin to send a new diamond invitation email and reset the user's password and multi-factor authentications. Once again, the user must follow those instructions contained in the email. Once they've logged in, the user's account will be re-enabled. Finally, the manage entity user button allows the entity admin to add or remove roles from an entity user or to remove a user from your entity in just grants. Now let's take a look at the View Entity button and its processes in Diamond system. The Entity Administrator can view the Entity Profile, which contains your Entity ID, Entity Name, Entity Doing Business As, or DBA, in the View Entity screen. They can also see the current Entity Administrator and Entity User names. Email addresses, roles, account status, those are all there by clicking that View Entity button. To view all entity users, you can use the scroll feature there that's located at the bottom of the page. Entity accounts will be shown as either enabled or disabled in the far right side. Then the cancel button will allow the entity administrator to exit the view entity screen. Let's look now at how the entity admin can change the entity administrator role to another user. So the entity administrator role is a very critical role as we've discussed, and every entity should have one user assigned as an entity admin. The entity should also be prepared to have a backup in mind so the role can be reassigned quickly and easily. So you can either plan for that absence or you must respond to an unplanned situation. So the following page will take a look at the process for a plan change for entity administrator. First thing you want to do is identify which entity users can fulfill your entity administrator responsibilities. And once you've done that, you want to ensure that those users have access to training as well as critical entity information. Now, to make the changes in Diamond, the current entity administrator will log into Diamond, select a user to assign as the new entity administrator. The next time the newly ent assigned entity administrator logs in, they will have access to all of the entity administrator duties. So the entity administrator can also access Diamond through their Just Grants account. To do so, when Just Grants opens to the homepage, you select the Entity Users option from the left side navigation menu. Now, once the Entity Users page is open, you can select the Manage Users button located at the top left of the Entity Users page. Once they have selected the Manage Users button, the Entity Administrator's Diamond page will open. Now, if the entity administrator is leaving the organization or is going to be going on vacation, then we highly recommend that they assign that role to someone else in their absence. 
because if the role is unassigned, it will not be possible for you to invite new users or to assign users to awards or application, which can result in delays in managing your awards. For example, if your financial manager has not been assigned to the award, there's no one available to assign them, then no one is there to complete your federal financial report, which can result in a suspension of funds. So to reassign the entity administrator role to another user, the current, e the current entity administrator will simply select the Manage Entity button. Now you'll notice that the Entity Profile and Current Entity Administrator sections are auto-populated with the entity's information. There in the center of the screen, you'll see the Entity Administrator Management section. Now you want to select the user that will take over this role by searching through the list in the drop-down of active available users. Now once you've selected the correct person, you'll click the next button that's located at the bottom of the Manage Entity page. After you've done uh, selected next, Diamond will ask for confirmation of the new entity administrator. And at this point, you can select the cancel button to cancel that process or back and make corrections, or you can click the confirm button at the bottom right corner to proceed and change the entity administrator. Now, when the entity administrator's absence is unplanned, there's a different process that involves JustGrants user support. Unplanned entity administrator changes require JustGrants user support assistance in this case. Entities need to onboard a new eBiz point of contact into SAM.gov. Once that's complete, then the entity must request that JustGrants user support confirm the entity's current SAM.gov eBiz point of contact and that they onboard that point of contact as the new entity admin. Now, the SAM.gov eBiz point of contact will receive that instructional email from Diamond to register. And once that registration is complete, then the newly onboarded entity admin can log in and assume the entity administrator related duties. Now, when the entity administrator is no longer available to transfer the entity administrator role to another, the entity must take the following steps to onboard the new entity administrator. SAM.gov, they want to confirm the entity's SAM.gov eBiz point of contact and update it as needed. Then they need to alert the eBiz point of contact that they're going to be onboarded as the new uh, entity admin. Then in JustGrants, they'll want to contact JustGrants support, JustGrants.support at usdoj.gov, or you can call 833-872-5175 and advise them that the entity administrator is not available and request that they onboard the current eBiz point of contact as your new entity administrator. The third thing, the new eBiz point of contact will receive an instructional email from Diamond and then they must successfully log back into Just Grants within 72 hours. Finally, Just Grants and Just Grants, the new entity administrator will need to log in and assume all of the entity administrator related duties. Let's now review a demonstration on how the entity administrator can invite entity users to Just Grants. So to invite entity users, the entity administrator must log into JustGrants from the home page and select the entity users link on the left to view the current users. The, administ the entity administrator can access Diamond from the JustGrants entity users list as well. So again, you've got to select that Manage Users button to open up the My App screen for access to Diamond. Now, only the entity administrator will be able to access Diamond and make changes to entity users. If an entity user does not know who their entity administrator is, they can look at the, the view users list. Now, it's in Diamond where the entity administrator invites, re-invites, and manages entity users. And once in Diamond, the entity administrator will select the Invite Entity User button to open the invitation page. Any fields that are marked with a red asterisk are mandatory. It's not possible to submit if any of these fields are left blank. The data and entity profile section is going to be auto-populated from entity information entered in SAM.gov. Then you want to enter the entity's user's email address, first name and last name, into the designated fields and the entity user profile section. And finally, expand the select roles drop-down and drop-down menu to view the roles to assign to the entity user. From here, you can select the roles from this drop-down menu, and you can assign either a single role or you can assign multiple roles to an entity user. Now, after you've completed, completed the entity user profile and selected the roles that you'd like to add, 
You simply select the next button at the bottom right corner of the Invite User page. After you click Next, Diamond will ask the Entity Administrator to confirm the information entered in this Entity User Profile is correct, as well as those assigned roles. So again, you can select the Cancel button to cancel the whole process or back, or you can select the Confirm button at the bottom right corner of the Invite page to proceed and add the roles to the Entity User. And after the Entity Administrator confirms the Entity User Profile information, an email like this one will be sent to the entity from diamond no reply usdoj.gov. Now, the links in this email, again, they do expire after 72 hours. So if the entity user does not take the outline steps within that time period, entity administrator will have to re-invite the entity user in time. So let's go through that process. How does the entity admin re-invite an entity user? So the entity administrator can re-invite an entity user when the entity user's account is disabled, the entity user forgot their password and needs a reset, or the links in the entity user instructional diamond email have expired. Now the entity user will get a new phone number and needs to update their access, or the entity user does not receive the email invitation from Diamond to register. They simply select that re-invite entity user button to search for a specific entity user, and then they're going to select to search for the entity user that they'd like to re-invite. Now, the search can be conducted by first and last name or email address. Once entered, you can select the next button at the bottom right corner of the re-invite user page, and then you'll use the displayed form to send a new registration link to the entity's user's email address or to reset the entity user's password and multi-factor authentication sections. Now, the entity user will need to update their password and multi-factor authentication using the link that's sent to them. The entity user is currently disabled, then the entity user will be re-enabled prior to them receiving that new registration link. So the data that's in the entity user profile is auto-populated again. You'll enter the entity user's name, or you can use the drop-down menu to select the entity user that would be re-invited. And then you can select that next button at the bottom right corner of the invitation. After you select Next, Diamond will ask for the Entity Administrator to confirm the information contained in the Entity User's Profile. Again, you can select the Cancel button to cancel the process, or the Back button to make corrections, or you can click Confirm at the bottom right corner of the Invite Reinvite Entity User page to proceed and add that role to the Entity User. A Reinviter user will receive an email as they did previously. So, how do you go about adding or removing roles from an Entity User? Well, let's answer that question. One of the primary duties of an entity administrator is continually managing entity users in Diamond, which includes adding or removing roles as the entity user responsibilities change. So individual users can be assigned multiple roles in Diamond, and adding and removing these roles is done in Diamond by the entity administrator, you need to keep in mind a few things. Who should have access to view the entity's information, applications, and awards adjust grants? Generally, all entity users can view all entity information aside from a user who possesses the application submitter role. Think too about who needs to take actions on specific applications and awards and what roles would enable those users to take those actions. It's a good idea here to have multiple users with multiple roles so that they can quickly receive assignments and just grants in case there's any staffing absences or changes. So to add or remove roles from an entity user, the entity administrator will select the Manage Entity User button. Then they're going to enter the desired entity user's name, or they can use the drop-down menu to select from the entity user list to be added or removed. After selecting the entity user's name, the entity user information auto-populates. Then they can select the Add Roles or Select Roles to remove drop-down menus at the bottom to add or remove the relevant roles pertaining to the identified entity user. Both of those drop-down menus can be used at the same time. And then you want to select the Next button at the bottom right corner of the Manage Entity User page. After selecting Next, Diamond requires confirmation of the entity user name and the roles that are being added or removed. Once again, you can select Cancel to cancel the process, back to make corrections, or you can select the Confirm button at the bottom right corner of the Manage Entity User page to proceed to add or remove a role from an entity user. 
Now let's take a look at how you would remove a user from your entity in Just Grants. Again, part of the ongoing maintenance duties of the entity administrator include keeping users and roles current in Diamond. That involves, as well, removing entity users from Diamond. Now, an entity administrator needs to remove an entity, like when a user is seeking to become a user with a different entity, or if they have to be leaving the organization, the entity administrator needs to remove them from Diamond. But the entity administrator has two options to remove them. They can use either the Manage Entity button or the Manage Entity User button. Let's take a look at that first option. Entity administrator can remove the entity user using this manage entity button by selecting manage entity. And then the entity user management section, they can enter the entity username in the select entity users field to remove the drop down list, or they can open the drop down to choose an entity from a list. You want to ensure that the correct entity user is selected for removal, and then you can select the next button in the bottom right corner. After you've selected next, again, Diamond will require confirmation of the entity, and you'll have those options again to either cancel the process, back to make corrections, or confirm in the lower right corner. Now, that second option is to use uh, is to remove an entity user from Diamond and using the Manage Entity User button. You'll enter the desired entity's username or use the drop down menu to select the entity user that you'd like to remove. After selecting the entity user's name, the entity user profile automatically populates. You want to select a remove user from entity checkbox. And after selecting the remove user from entity option, a note will appear at the bottom of the manage user page instructing the entity admin how to invite the entity user back into Diamond after they've been removed. Now you want to ensure the correct entity user is selected for removal and then click the next button at the bottom. Once again, you'll get a confirmation from Diamond. And once again, you can select cancel to cancel your process back to making corrections or next or the confirm button next to, con to confirm the removal. All right, with that under our belt, let's pause once again and see if we have any questions. Uh, there are no additional questions at this time. Thank you. So let's take a look at the entity administrator's user management tasks and just grants. And before we review some of those processes, let's get a brief overview of what just grants is. It's this is where the entity and users will be completing DOJ grant related activities like assigning entity users to specific applications and awards. And once an entity user has been assigned to an application or award, they will receive assignments and be able to take actions associated with their specific role. Let's first look at how the entity administrator assigns and reassigns users to applications. User assignments to applications are managed by the entity admin on an application by application basis, enabling an entity to manage users and assign work across an entity in one location. Now, to assign and reassign entity users to application, entity administrator logs into Just Grants and from the home page selects the applications option on the left navigation. Then they'll want to select the checkbox or checkboxes next to the applications that are being assigned or reassigned. Then they'll want to select the Choose Role drop-down menu to select the role that they want to assign or reassign. And then each application can be assigned up to three application submitters. Now, each Office of Justice Programs, or OJP, and Office on Violence Against Women, or OBW, application is assigned one authorized representative, while the Office of Community-Oriented Policing Services, or COPS, they are assigned two authorized representatives. Now, a list of users with the selected role will appear in the Assign To field, and yes, select the Assign To drop-down menu to select the user to assign or reassign. Now, if a user does not appear in the Choose User menu, the Entity Administrator is going to have to add that role to the user in the Diamond system. But after choosing a role and, and uh, the user assigned to that role, the Assign button becomes enabled. You can select the Assign button. Then a confirmation page will appear with the option to either cancel or submit the assignment, 
Selecting the submit button will assign the application to that particular user. Wires cancel will end the process and return to the application without changes. Now, if there is a submission, it will be confirmed with a text message and a banner at the top of the page saying that the assignments have succeeded. And then you can select the carrot to the left of that checkbox to expand and review the application details. Now, the entity administrator can review the application details and edits can be performed using the drop down menus and buttons at the bottom of the page. Another entity admin task is managing into users and just grants by removing additional application submitters. So the application submitter is a required role, not one that can be deleted, only reassigned by the entity administrator. So the second and third application submitters are not required and they can be reassigned or deleted by the entity admin. Once again, from the admit applications page, you'll select the carrot next to the application to open the application detail page. To learn more about how multiple applications uh, submitters access and work on applications, you can visit the application submission page of the Just Grants Resources website. Now, to remove application submitter two or three from an application, you select the trash can icon to the right of either one of those roles. After selecting the trash can icon, a confirmation page will appear. You can click that submit button to remove the additional application, or you can select cancel to return to the application details page without any changes. Now, when you return to the application details to confirm that the selected application has been removed, only two application submitters will be shown aside to the application. You can review this information by clicking the application ID to open this application or grant package. To return to the application details to confirm the selected application submitters removed, only two application submitters are now signed. Then you can check the participants section located on the right side of the page, and you'll notice that only the application submitter and application submitter three are still listed as displayed on this particular application. As with applications, the entity administrator also assigns or reassigns entity users to awards. This enables entities to effectively manage users and assign work across an entity in one location. So to assign and reassign entity users to awards, the entity administrator logs into Just Grants and from the home page selects the awards option in the left navigation. Then they will select the show high roles button to display the roles dropdown menu. And they'll select as many role uh, checkboxes as needed. Now, the roles selected from this menu populate the awards table below and display current assignments. Then you click the confirm button after you make those role selections or cancel to hide the drop down menu. And then you can select the checkbox or checkboxes next to the awards that are being assigned or reassigned. Then you'll use the choose role drop down menu that's located at the bottom of the page to select the role to assign or reassign. Now, a list of users that have that selected role appears in the assign field. You can open the choose user drop down menu at the bottom of the page and select the user. Once again, if a user does not appear in the choose user menu, the entity admin will have to add that role to the user and dine it. Again, please note that users can only be assigned to roles that they have been assigned to in dine it. So once they've been selected and chosen, Entity user assigned to that role can click the Assign button located at the bottom of the page to complete the action. After they click Assign, confirmation will appear with the option to cancel or submit. Now, a submission confirmation screen is displayed with a message in the banner at the top of the page showing that the reassignments have succeeded. And you can select the carrot to the left of any of the checkboxes to expand and review all of those specific award details. The entity administrator can review the award details, and if needed, the entity administrator can make edits using the drop down menus and buttons at the bottom of the page. So let's take a look now at the entity profile. This is a screen in Just Grants that presents an entity's critical identifying information, and it's imperative that the entity administrator be familiar with this information, including the entity's name. Alphanumeric identifier, CM.gov registration, and current status. 
So to access the entity profile, log into Just Grants and select the entity profile option from the left side navigation. Most of the information shown in the entity profile page is retrieved from SAM.gov's profile. In Just Grants, the entity admin must designate whether the entity is law enforcement or faith-based and designate the entity's legal address as the, as the physical mailing address. Now, the entity administrator has the ability in Just Grants to edit the following fields. Law enforcement designation, which defaults to no, faith-based, which also defaults to no, legal address designation, and the options here are physical address or mailing address. Then they select the submit button at the bottom right corner of the page to complete any profile changes. And an audit trail of, of any entity profile changes is displayed in the history section located at the bottom of the empty profile page where users can search the history by keyword, group, or field. Let's now review the process an entity administrator follows for maintaining entity documents. Entity administrators will upload documents to the entity documents section so that other entity and DOJ users can view and download those documents for use on specific applications, awards, and activities. Documents located in this section apply to the entity as a whole or they relate to multiple applications and awards, such as an indirect cost agreement or financial capability questionnaire. So to view, add, or remove documents, Entity Admin logs into Just Grants and selects the Entity Document option from the left side navigation. At the download and viewed an entity document, select the file name. And to view the document notes for an entity document, select the carrot to the left of the file name, and the section expands. To add a new document, you'll select the Add New Document button. After selecting that button, a pop-up screen will appear with the Select File option for you to upload a document. The types of documents that can be uploaded include uh, Doc, DocX, PDFs, or Excel, XLSM files. You want to fill in the confirmation page text fields, select the Submit button to complete the document upload process. And then again, you can select cancel to stop this process and return or submit to continue. Any newly submitted entity documents will appear in the document list. If you need to delete an entity document, you can select the trash can icon to the left of that file name. Now, when entity administrator selects that to delete a document, confirmation screen will appear asking them to confirm it. But if the document is associated with any other application or award, a pop-up pop will appear that states it's unable to delete because it's associated with the following cases, listing the case ID and case information below the notice. So in these cases, the entity admin will not be able to delete the document. So before we head into our resources section, we'll pause again to see if anybody has any questions. Are there no questions at this time? Thank you. So before we wrap up today, we want to provide you some information about some of the resources in Just Grants, such as uh, specific training resources, user support information, as well as areas where you can get news and updates. When you open up the training link on the Justice Grants website, you're going to see a list of training topics displayed. You can select a topic to, display, to explore and open a page of training resources that are dedicated to that topic where you'll typically find a job aid reference guide and quick reference guides. Now those job aid reference guides provide detailed step-by-step -step instructions with screenshots that help you walk through a task. You can either print those or view them on screen depending on how you'd like to work. Also a great reference if you're in the middle of a task and want to verify next steps. Now those quick reference guides are short three to four page guides that walk you through step-by-step -step, uh, over specific tasks. For Just Grants technical issues, they should be sent to the Just Grants technical support. For grant application status, you'll want to check the websites from DOJ's managing offices, COMPS, OJP, and OVW. Now, to contact the COMPS and OJP technical support desk, you can send an email to justgrants.support.usdj.gov, or you can call them at 833-872-5175, Monday through Saturday between 7 and 9 Eastern or between 9 and 5 Eastern on Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, and federal holidays. 
Now, if you were an applicant or award for an OVW award and need assistance, you could contact OVW support desk at ovw.justgrantsupport at usdoj.gov or call them at 866-655-4482. And again, that phone is available Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern. Please use that Just Grant support email or phone line for any issues that you might encounter when you're working at Just Grants. We offer these virtual Q&A series each week. You can use the links that are shown here for more specifics. Post award management sessions held on Mondays from 1 to 2.30. Tuesdays are our entity management sessions like today's, focused on topics for entity administrators between 2 and 3. And on Wednesdays, we hold our application mechanic sessions that focus on topics for submitting your applications between 2.30 and 4.30. Thursdays are dedicated to sessions on award acceptance from 2 to 3 p.m. Again, all classes are Eastern time. And just to note that these upcoming sessions are repeated. They're repeated each week, and they do not cover any new or updated material. So if you've attended any of these sessions, you do not need to continue to attend them. But you are more than welcome to attend any that you'd like to. Now, before we wrap up, we'll pause one last time to answer any final outstanding questions. There are no final questions. Thank you. All right. Very good. Thank you very much for joining us in this session today. We hope that you found the information we provided today to be useful. We would ask that uh, after you exit this session, you take a few minutes to complete the survey that will open. We appreciate all the feedback that we get in improving uh, presentations like the one you've seen today.